Greetings and welcome, uh, friendos. Uh, here we are, Mr. Wadi. We're talking about, like, interpreting shapes of distributions and whatnot. And we actually uh, are going to make ourselves... We got a frequency table here. Some might call it a frequency distribution. Uh, and we're going to turn this into a histogram, friends. Here we go. So it says that the frequency distribution shows the number of hours that students volunteer per month. So one person is in the category of the one to two, five people are in the three to four, 12 are in the five to six, 20, etc. Now, this does not mean, I want to just point out some of the limitations here of uh, a frequency distribution. This just tells me, Jake, be quiet, that 20 people were between seven and eight hours volunteering per month. That doesn't necessarily mean all 20 were seven hours. All 20 were eight hours. Some of those could have been seven hours and 15 minutes. Some of those could have been seven hours, 45 minutes. Some of those could probably even have been eight and a half hours because notice the next category doesn't start until nine. Uh, so we don't know these individual scores. I just know how many landed in that bucket of delicious original recipe. Uh, so, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, let's make ourselves a frequency distribution. So I'm going to whoop whoop and lovely, lovely. Here we go. And so I've got, uh, I've got this. Why isn't that? There we go. Uh, for my X axis, I'm going to have equally, uh, incremental gaps that represent each of these classes. All right, so here we'll have the one to two, here we'll have the three to four, and I'm just going to try my best to equally increment these categories so my bars are all roughly the same width. Five to six, seven to eight, uh, nine to ten, eleven z's to twelve, uh, and thirteen to go. Now, how high should I have to go on this y-axis here if I was to call it that? Twenty? Yeah, it looks like the highest value is twenty. Uh, sure, we could do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Now notice I'm, I'm tick marking by twos, but I'm only labeling every other. You don't have to label every single one, okay? Uh, 16, 18, 20. Uh, looks like I could have given myself some more, some more vert. Uh, so anyways... One person is in the one to two category, so that's going to be a, a bar that is half high right here, right? Uh, five people are in the three to four category, so five is going to be about there. Mm -hmm. And 12 people in the next one, so 12, bring it around town. Something like. Uh, 20 are in this next category. Yeah? Yeah? Nice. Nice. 15. Uh, 15, 7 would be around here. And 2 is around there. And let's see, yesterday I ended up uh, pouring a bucket in these just because it looked so cool. Let's see how well I closed these these boundaries. Ready? Oh dear. Ah! That was crazy. Wait, what? What happened? It looks like I closed that off. Oh dear. Guys, one of these is not closed off. I can't pour the bucket. But what I could do is I could I could shade this real nice. Look at that. That's classy. Classy. First, I draw this realistic head, and then I erase more of the detailed features. Yeah, I can't quite. No, that's good enough. So, uh, so there we go. So there is my frequency distribution. Now, I'm not done. <coughs> they said, describe <laughs> the shape of the distribution. Ah, that's crazy. Uh, there we are. Now I'm back. Uh, what shape is this distribution?
Now notice this, the, the shape is kind of like a symmetric mountain here. So the shape is symmetric. Now question, this is uh, not part of this problem, but it'll benefit us to ask it because it's a skill we're doing in the next ones. Uh, what would the best measure of center be for this? I would want to use mean instead of median or mode to get the measure of center for any symmetric uh, graph, any symmetric distribution. And the best uh, measure of variability would be standard deviation whenever it's symmetric. Okay? So those are, those are the things that I would use to describe any symmetric uh, distribution. All right. Here's with the stem and the leaf. Okay, let's interpret this. And they've got a little key here for us, okay? Uh, so notice the stem. Notice the stem here represents the tens place. And the one... Hey, friendly friends, let's all be quiet, please. Follow along. Let's not harm each other's education, please. Come on now. Uh, the one represents the, the one's place in this case. Right? Do you guys see what I'm talking about? So this, this value right here is a one with a one in front of it. All right. Cut your mouth. for Thanks. Uh, so that's 11. Uh, here's another one. That's another 11. There's a 13, 14, and 18. Okay? Uh, so that's what those represent. Uh, you could imagine this being like a frequency distribution where all of these numbers are the numbers that fit between 10 and 20. All right? And these numbers are going to be the ones that fit between 10 and 30. Right, those numbers are 22, I get a 23, a 24, 27, and a 28. Do you guys see how I'm interpreting this 8 to be a 28? Cool, cool, cool. So if I wanted to describe this distribution, notice this. Uh, whoop, I can actually uh, take this graph, and if I kind of, ready, turn it on its head... I can actually kind of see what that would look like roughly as uh, it's, it's not symmetric. It looks like it's, uh, it's skewed. And the tail tapers off to the right. And so it's skewed right. Or it's not that, yeah, sorry. Because the tail tapers to the right. Okay? So I could actually have, like, made this into a frequency distribution for real. But if you kind of think about it, each of these digits just represent one... Unit. So if I wanted to think about my bar graph, here's one, two, three values were there, four, and five, that I could have imagined this as being like a histogram like this, right? So that's kind of like the easy way to imagine it uh, like so. All right, here's question eight. Determine which measures of center and variation best represent the data. Explain. All right, it looks like this, it's skewed. Oh, good call, skewed left. Well done. Uh, so the best measure of center is going to be the median. All right. And the best measure of variation is what we call the five number. Yeah, summary, well done. All right, five number summary, uh, which would be, Right? A box and whisker. Whisker plot, right? That's when the five numbers being the lowest, uh, quartile one, quartile two, 
quartile three, and then the highest number. All right, so the, a box and whisker for this, by the way, would look something like this. I just want to like kind of make it up. It would look something like this, that this side would be longer, just like the tail over here is longer than the one over here. So the data is most densely compact in these regions, which is what I tried to represent, right? Because each of those in a box and whisker represent 25% of your data. So it looks something like this. They didn't ask us to make it, but I just kind of wanted to give you an idea. Longer. All right, last question. Display the data in a histogram using seven intervals, beginning with 26-50. Hmm. Which measures of center and variation represent the data? And then they ask about a particular thing. Let's see, this is question nine. Let me go to question nine on this. Here we go. Uh, so here I've got the data listed. All right. Uh, they wanted us to start at 26, so I'm going to start... My class is 26. There it goes. All right, I was about to say, that's, that's done lagging out on me. I was getting nervous. I was, uh, I was hoping my formulas were going to work. And 26 to 50, I'm going to have uh, classes that are, I think 24 should work. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like that. All right, so that's, uh, that's what it did. And then it gave me a frequency of the number of these numbers that landed in those categories. Okay, now I can insert a chart, and I'm going to uh, do a yeah, column, and we're going to use uh, column D. Here we go. Ooh, look at that. Now, what's the only problem with this in terms of it being a histogram? Yeah, those bars widths, they done need to be wider, right? Uh oh All right, so you could have done that by making your own frequency distribution by hand and then drawn a histogram based on it. And the general shape I'm seeing is this. Now, I know that there's gaps here. There's a gap here. But right, if I was to try to generally describe the shape of it, that's what it would kind of be. All right, so the, the best measure of center is going to be uh, the median. Yeah, which way is this skewed? Someone said it. Skewed right. And because it's skewed and not symmetric, a median will be a better measure of center. Median might be, I don't know, somewhere around here. Uh, and the best uh, measure of variation would be, write a box and whisker or a five number summary. Okay, because it is skewed. Now they ask this question. The bank charges a fee for any ATM withdrawals less than $150. How would you interpret the data? Okay. So the table shows that the, the last 24 ATM withdrawals at a bank. Okay, so if there's a fee when it's less than 150 uh, how many situations does that apply to? It would be all of these situations, right? Like so. So that's 4 plus 8 is 12. Uh, here's another 2. That's 14. Here's another 6. 20. Uh, so it looks like 20 out of... Uh, how many total were there? 2 and 1. 20 out of 23 of the withdrawals would have been charged a fee because they were less than 150. Question, comment? Uh, these are the heights. The y-axis, yeah, this is too high, this is four high. Oh, uh, these would have been from the frequency of numbers that were between 
uh, 26 and 50. So let's see if I get four. Uh, that's between, uh, that's between, that's between, and that's between. So notice I've got four numbers that are between 26 and 50. Those are the four numbers counted in this bar on the history. Question. So uh, 20 out of 23. I would expect uh, 86 point, uh, actually we'll round up, 87.0% of transactions would have had a fee. Would have a, right? Right, so that's one thing that I could say about that. Or I could say only three people or, you know, or 20 people, 20 people would have been charged, three people wouldn't have. One fifty. Yeah, so here's the three people right there that would not have been charged a fee. And in that case, it's a little bit more. All right, well, thank you for watching, mis amigos de internet.